Well, to find out more about the person thought to be behind the double attack in Oslo, we have a unique opportunity to speak to Olaf Andersson. He's a spokesman for the Union of Russian Communities in Sweden, and he knew Anders Breivik personally. Mr. Andersson, uh, thank you very much for being on the program with us. Uh, just So how, how well did you know this man? Well, uh, we used to, as uh, it's called, hang out during one summer, and then we uh, worked on an uh, off-and-on basis for a couple of months. Okay, uh, now after seeing all these uh, horrific uh, events that happened in Norway, people are wondering just what kind of a person is he? So uh, what can you tell us about him? Did he get along with other people? Was, had he ever shown any strange behavior? Uh, well, I mean, absolutely nothing as uh, anywhere near that. And I mean, it, it would have been unimaginable. Uh, but of course, there has been some small things uh, which... Uh, probably don't explain this, but I mean, he have had an ego and especially uh, who, uh, so to speak, in relation to girls, uh, he had sort of a picture of himself, which was uh, rather inflated. And uh, sometimes um, it would sort of cause friction if, for example, the fair sex would prefer uh, other guys would working with us who would be like, uh, for example, Pakistanis that we have working with us. But it, uh, and that would kind of a little bit set him off. Uh, but it was still on a such a, you know, like mundane scale. And, you know, guys, uh, when they're uh, 16, you know, 17, 18, you know, say lots of stuff. And uh, it's, it didn't come out as radical or ideological or thought through. It was more like, uh, irritation, anger, that kind of stuff. So he was very, uh, he was a very opinionated person, though. Uh, not really, not not really. I wouldn't say that he came across as opinionated. He came across that uh, sometimes, um, if I may use that word, uh, it used to bug him sometimes that uh, girls would skip, you know, him and maybe pick some guy who is Pakistani. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, there's a lot of attention now on his uh, Twitter feed. He, he wrote a quote. He said, one man with a belief is worth 100,000 with only interest. And that was just before the attacks. What kind of ideas were going around in his head based on the conversations you may have had with him? Uh, he never came across as some kind of like a religious fanatic or anything. I mean, I knew that he was, uh, you know, religious, but it wasn't like he would try to convert you or anything, you know. Uh, he just, I just knew sort of that he was religious, but that's pretty much it. Kind of, you know, sort of um, keeping that part mainly to himself. But then on the other hand, if you look at the central Oslo, there is like, uh, I don't know what it, should, it could be compared to, but there is any possible uh, denomination of, let's say, not a mainstream church, and each of them are, is trying to get you in. Uh, on the other hand, there is just a, a lake uh, of population who, who are very heavy drug addicts. And then you have squatters. So central Oslo is basically like just, you know, pick your poison. Uh, which wrong way do you want to pick? And so uh, I'm in no way trying to explain anything, but I'm just telling you the uh, surroundings of the places where he was around, so to speak. Sure. It's, it's interesting, though, that you're saying that he's a very religious person. At the same time, he's uh, portrayed to be nationalist. So how, how did these two uh, work well together in a person like him? Uh, well, you know, uh, at, at, um, at the moment when I uh, knew him, um, I, would, I would not uh, describe him as a person who is uh, very thought through ideologically. Uh, I would more describe him who is uh, simply bugged, irritated, sometimes even all the way to the anger, that, like he would be angry that he uh, would be, um, so to speak, second to some person of, let's say, Oriental or Pakistani origin, but not, not more than that. I did not get this thought through ideological uh, why from his conversation. Okay, just very briefly now, you're talking to me about him being quite an angry person, he had quite an ego, um, and he was a religious person. Now, do, looking in retrospect, would you have imagined that one day he would be capable of doing something like this, if it is indeed him? No way, absolutely no. Never, ever I would have imagined that. And he, he, there are 
far more guys who are acting up way more weird than he was. Okay. Now, how, how do you think uh, he got these ideas in, into his head in the first place? You, you kept talking about stories in his relationship with girls and in church. Do you, th you think it's somewhere there that he got these, these ideas into his head? You just have to look around central Oslo and uh, it's like a, a, a cloak of people who have very radical religious views all the way ranging from like Muslim, Christian, and then you have people who are squatters with the leftist ideas and uh, obviously he has managed to find some right-wing groups so uh, I'm not generally surprised that people find very extreme ideas in central Oslo. Okay, just one more thing. Uh, what, what you, you kept saying that he got irritated. What was a topic, for example, that really got him irritated or angry? That would be if, uh, if uh, generally a guy, um, like, or him, and more generally maybe a guy would be uh, picked over and then uh, somebody would go out with, uh, let's say, somebody from the Orient instead. That would be one of the things that would set him off. Okay, why do you think he did this? There are speculations about the reasons behind uh, why he would commit such uh, a crime. Why do you think, uh, based on what you know of him? I have no idea. I could not imagine. I, I cannot even imagine that he could do that. He, he must have been somehow brainwashed or something. Uh, he must have... Brainwashed by who? By, by, by his uh, Christian fanaticism, the religion, or nationalism? Who is he brainwashed by? Uh I don't know. It's anybody's pick, but I'm just saying that in central Oslo, all of that is defined, and you, if you are just there, uh, you will be approached by these people constantly. Okay, well, thank you very much for that insight into uh, the uh, suspect. Olaf Andersson, thank you very much. He's a spokesman for the Union of Russian Communities in Sweden, and again, he had known Anders Breivik. Thank you.